To rebuild the valve, replacing the main piston, seals, and brine valve piston, you're going to need to turn the water off, or if you have a nice fleck bypass, just swing that arm around uh, 90 degrees, cut the water off. Then you're going to want to put it up into backwash. That will let any pressure that's still on the system squirt out the drain line. You don't need to unplug the power for this one, but if you feel safer, by all means, go ahead. Bring out the trusty screwdriver. You're going to have two or four screws here on the back, or if you have the L-bracket version of this valve, you'll have a cover that lifts straight off. We are working on the Econominer meter version, so we do have this little cable here. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out so that it won't be engaged here because we're going to take the power head off of the unit. Uh, you can use a screwdriver or if you got a couple uh, socket wrenches first thing you want to do is take the center screw out of the main piston and you have two screws on either side Two reasons you would uh, be rebuilding your valve. One is you found it stuck in its cycle and it's very hard to turn the knob yourself or you have a lot of leakage going on around your main piston. Both are common with age. And depending on how rough your water is would be how quickly or how often you might need to rebuild the system. Now with the center screw and the two on either side, you tilt the power head slightly forward, wiggling it. There's a little catch right here. It'll come free. Now your power head, you can set it aside out of the way. Now we have three new screws and this little metal plate exposed. Use a flat edge screwdriver or a little socket wrench. The real old models don't allow you to use a screwdriver. You would have to use a socket. And some would say the socket's easier to use than a regular screwdriver. I'm just used to doing things. However, Whatever tools are handy. Alright, we got the metal plate off. Now our pistons are exposed. And you should be able to wiggle the main piston out. A couple seals and spacers may come with it. And you can pull the rest of them out with your fingers. Now if you got a lot of hard water or iron, you may have to pry the ones in the middle out. I've seen that. Uh, average water you can fish them out with just your fingers. Alright, got them all out. The brine valve is sitting in this hole. Sometimes it may seem like it's not going to come out. Just get a good grip on it if you have to. There are pliers. Just pull straight up. You notice there's an o-ring on it. That will stay. There's another one just like it that will stay down on the bottom of this hole. If you should happen to notice it coming out when you pull this out, make sure you tuck it right back in and it's sitting flush. Uh, sometimes people replace these, they pull that out, they don't know it, and they end up with water streaming out. Now we've got the old parts out, put the new parts in. in. The seals and spacers are just going to form a sandwich. Start with a seal and end with a seal. Rubber seal goes down, just push it down with your finger. 
There's, they're identical on either side, so there's no up or down to this. Get that elastic spacer down there, another seal. Just kind of run your finger around, make sure it's seated. Put the plastic spacer, whoops, stay in there. Seal, spacer, seal, spacer, seal. Got a new piston. This is a softener piston. You can tell by the white top. Some older pistons used uh, green Teflon. This is gray Teflon. That doesn't matter. Softeners are white top, uh, backwashing only, uh, and green sand and a few other filters might be black top. And they do make a gray top, low water, sometimes used on city water, but not too often. Any of them would work. They just have different uh, backwash times based on that. All right, set that in there. Metal plate goes right back on. Now you'll notice it's sitting up a ways. That's normal. It's not gonna go all the way down until we screw it down with these three screws. So don't be surprised if your plate's sticking up. In fact, if it's not sticking up, you've done something wrong. You left a part out. <laughs> Get these bad boys on there. Not very tricky, is it? It's one of the things I like about this Flex 5600 is it is perhaps the easiest valve ever made to work on. Right. Go around, make sure all three are down good and snug. Got that metal plate all the way down now. Put the power head back on. Just goes right over the holes. And sometimes push that plunger down a little bit or turn the knob so you get the center gear lined up. I usually get that screw in there first. It's self-tapping thread on this little screw, so kind of go backwards just a hair to you feel the groove, then you can go ahead and spin it on in. No need trying to make a new set of threads. And it snugs up against the washer. It doesn't uh, actually get tight because that is a moving connection. And we got these two. socket this time. Either need a fairly big flathead or 3 8 socket. I think this is to get these down here. Go ahead and grab this front knob and see if it feels good. And that clicking noise is just the uh, motor gear mechanism ratcheting as it should, letting you turn it freely. Sounds like new. Of course, it is new. I'm cheating. I'm using a brand new valve. Yours won't look so pretty. Uh, put the back plate on. Put your cable back in. Turn the water on. And you're done.